human mind cannot comprehend the wisdom of the Supreme. It really is a grace and a blessing to be here in your magnificent presence. Um, the question that I have is regarding empathy and compassion. Okay. Um, I find myself here after listening to you on YouTube. It's been guiding me mm. deeper to go within. Yes. Yeah, sure. But 20 years ago, I received um, the techniques of self-knowledge from my beloved master, whom I love very, very deeply. And in the practice of this knowledge and going within, um, it's definitely sensitized the feeling of vibrations and energy. Um, so what I find is that I've become much more empathic. So the question is, sometimes the empathy, it kind of, what's happening with, in the world and with other people, it, it really reaches deep inside as a, as a pain, yeah. felt as a pain of the world. Yes. So how, the question then mm. is, how do I remain more detached ah, within this experience? Thank you. Very good. Um, this sensitivity is natural to all, to intelligent being. Uh, once you have recognized self and know I am that self, not as belief, but as pure experience. Let's pull it that. Then. Compassion is not something you do. Uh, my master said also, Papaji say, if the hand puts food in the mouth, should the mouth say thank you to the hand? No, they are one movement. They are one movement. This is compassion. If you want to say, I am not doing something to another, it becomes an action expressed from the self to the self. This becomes your own intimate. That is your sensitivity. You see this. You don't have to say that. Outwardly, it takes the form we are doing something for the world and so on. But inwardly, you know this is not it is. The self is caring for itself. It's another opportunity to express its beauty, its love to itself. Not another. There is no other. You come to see this thing. So. At a certain point, of course, when we see pain taking place and it seems like some agonies, something naturally responds to that. But if it goes more further than that, where it starts to be you're seeing suffering here and how can I how how can we put a stop to this and so on, then you have travelled too far, actually. I want to say this because um, it is like to say this thing should not be. And I know there is a sensitivity in us that feels, you know, we'd like to see the end of poverty, we'd like to see the end of suffering. It's not going to end. Not like that. It is also an instrument of consciousness that consciousness uses to refine itself. A human mind cannot comprehend the wisdom of the Supreme. At best, something just says, it is inscrutable and offers up, you may say, as consciousness, its own sense of independence to the service of that wholeness. It does it, but it does it without any obsession like that. You may say if a sage happens to be passing through some place and suddenly there is an earthquake and buildings have fallen down and people are screaming and trapped, that one, he or she, would go there and uh, be also busy helping to do everything, move and help and uh, do what is done. When the work is done, they carry on. Not with the story, 
oh, I went to this city, it was so terrible, and I don't know what to do, and what's this? No, just like this. Now, this kind of detachment is not uncaring, it's profoundly appropriate, and beyond this, you cannot suffer on behalf of others. It's not a help. You know. And also, sometimes we need to be careful because how your mind can create a sense of what is happening may not be true. It's quick to show suffering, but some nece- suffering on some level also necessary. We say, "But how? Show me how." I don't know. I can show you how. I see that if you take this one out of this position and say, "You know, my life is like this," and uh, I put you, "Okay, what would you like? I'd like to put them over there," and after two weeks they're right back here because their life seems to be here. This is where it's real for me. It's not real for me here. I thought it was. It would be. Hmm? To live a life, you know, sort of like you know, sucking honey all day, and then somehow it's not—it's not what I want. I'm, I'm here with my difficulties and all of uh, all of this. It's there's a reality to it, and something that, that must be gone through also. You say, but yes. And then we say, but what about the children? And and what about these? The children are also ancients. We're all in this together. I am not saying don't care. Not at all. But there is something, stay as the Self, and let your eyes witness the actions of the Supreme. Because your suffering on behalf of others uh, does not help them. And uh, the word suffering also it's 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 so misused misunderstood often because we identify oh i wouldn't like that to happen to me and yes that is a motive motivation also to go and to to share to be present to be true there yeah, also so i cannot put it i don't want to put it into any kind of shape too much i just tell you stay as the self Somehow all this will come to make sense at some level in you. But sitting where you are in our dualistic thinking and egoic mind, we cannot fathom the inscrutability of God's ways. We cannot do it. Gradually you come to understand and see, yes, there's somehow there's a trust and there's a seeing. And where there can be help, help will manifest because you cannot go by and see a brother or a sister suffering or in some pain and just walk over and say, Well, it's nothing, it doesn't exist. No, something compels you, if you are true, to be there and at least to be present and to, to look. But don't overdo. You don't have to become a missionary about it. I don't want to cut any category or anything about this not, this not. But my purest sharing with you is remain as the self. Remain as the self. And whatever actions come in that moment, they'll be expressed there. It's almost the actions of the universe if there's not the person there. The person is not an accurate assessor of what is. And I gave example also on one occasion. I always talk about this because I find it such a profound insight in a satsang very much like this um, that took place some years ago in Bombay. One man stood up after Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj was talking a bit about life, the same topic, in fact. And he said, Sir, I am listening to you, and I trust your words. I am touched by what you have to say. But if I am to be honest, in my case, I am always experiencing suffering. And the Master quickly retorted, says, No, it is not true. You are not experiencing suffering. You are suffering you are experiencing. Yes. You are not experiencing suffering, because suffering is not a thing. You can say, I am experiencing suffering. Says you are suffering, you are experiencing, 
that puts the power right back with him. You see, how you meet what you see is determined by who you think you are, also, and the level of wisdom that you have gained. How deep your understanding dwells inside the self of being. Then you will see that uh, you will not suffer your experiencing. In much the same way as the example I gave, if a sage was walking through some place and there was some catastrophe, some calamity, you will address it, hmm? be present with it when what is done is finished, and you will know also when it is finished. Here you know it. Something will say like this, and that body will move along like that. Now others may say, but you know, that's very. How can you be so calm and so unfeeling? But maybe uh, that one is in a purer state of functioning than the one who is simply crying and uh, screaming in the street. The sensitivity is natural, but it must not predominate. It cannot be on the front page of consciousness. It is included in all the, with all the other expressions that may come. But the predominant, uh, prevailing presence will be that of pure awareness self. I gave an example some while ago that if suddenly there was some scene where complete devastation, a bomb goes off or something or whatever, and if we could see angels attending that scene. If you had the eyes to see it, they would not be crying and weeping and uh, terrified. There will be a serenity, a presence, a power, an authority, a calmness, a compassion inconceivable in the human mind that will move uh, to bring change in a way that we cannot grasp. These forces are here. They are part of our own makeup, inner makeup, but we fail to see and to appreciate the potential and the power and the presence of the Supreme, because our eyes belong to somewhere else, are in service to something else. Our projections quite often blind us. We don't have to over prepare for any calamity. Just be the self. Nothing is as fresh as the self. But while we carry the breath of the whole mind, we keep telling you, but you know, you're not doing anything, you're just sitting there, just passing time. So everyone becomes on the treadmill running around. We can't stop. We give no value to silence, to rest in space. So, yes, that sensitivity is there. It is part of that sweet fragrance of the Self, but it cannot be uh, the most prominent thing. Is uh, feeling this thing, and if you stay in this, it will pull you in. Then you start to feel, you know, what's it all about? How can God let this happen? And it can happen if it goes too far. You stay put here. Say it is so much you will never understand, not by effort. Uh, it's like the Supreme is saying, you can gather all your greatest minds to figure me out, and you cannot come near me. But if you love me, I am yours. Nobody is clever enough uh, to comprehend. Uh, the glories of God. If you are clever enough, uh, surrender yourself at the feet of the Supreme. Don't even determine what you think is good for you. Be so complete in your offering, self-offering, as if you can. Even their grace is the biggest part.
even to imagine ourselves as instruments of the divine will is still an arrogance. It's still an arrogance. It still requires an apartness. We are one. Laughing together, suffering together, living together, dying together, and beyond all of it, together as one. Thank you.